morning. We welcome all parishioners to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish as your place of worship, of faith formation, and of outreach. We welcome all visitors. We depend on your weekly offerings and donations to keep this parish operating. So there are collection boxes, tap machines, parish envelopes, or donations online available for you. Thank you for your continuing support. Please take a moment to silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering hymns are in the Catholic Book of Worship. Number 61, Hosanna, followed by 62, All Glory, Praise, and Honor. Please stand. I presume everyone has received their palms at the door for Palm Sunday. If not, you can have some here at the door, palms. Please hold them up for the blessing. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And let us pray, almighty and ever-living God, sanctify Bless these branches with your blessing that we will follow Christ the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden, untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? The disciples told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit it to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, the Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm can be found in the booklets in your pews at number 29. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. 
She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where my, I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray, betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. 
Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away from the guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And as he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire, now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, 
Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought, brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. stand. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. Please be seated. Holy Week is the most sacred week of the church year. It begins today as we commemorate Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. It also marks the beginning of the last week of Jesus' earthly life, the fulfillment of his earthly mission. The palms of welcome and rejoicing chants, Hosanna to the Son of David, at Jesus' entry into Jerusalem will soon be cheers of rejection and angry cries calling for his death, crucify him. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through his death and resurrection the world might be saved. Is there any, when you reflect on today's reading, is there any ray of hope or light in this awful darkness we have heard in the gospel today? At the very beginning of the story, as Jesus is about to enter into his passion and death, a woman anoints his head with costly ointment. A stranger who had come into Jerusalem from the country, Simon of Serene, helped Jesus carry his cross. The woman who had served Jesus in Galilee, the women did not run away. They look on helplessly from a distance as Jesus hung dying on the cross. After his death, a member of the Jewish council, Joseph of Arimathea, courageously went to Pilate and asked permission to give Jesus a dignified burial in his own tomb. Some of the women who were at Calvary prepared spices to anoint Jesus' body when the Jewish Sabbath was over. The Roman centurion, seeing how Jesus died, recognized Jesus' special relationship with God, saying he was God's son. Truly, this was God's son. There was light in the awful darkness. The greatest light in that darkness was Jesus himself. The purpose of his life was to reveal God's love to all, to show that no one was excluded from God's mercy and forgiveness. Now, Jesus could have avoided death if he had abandoned his mission, yet such was his faithfulness to God's will in all that he, and to all of us, that, in the words of Paul in the second reading, he was humble himself and was became obedient to the point of death, death on the cross. So he didn't avoid his mission. He kept true to the will of God for his life. The worst qualities of human nature could not extinguish the light of God's love that shone through Jesus. He absorbed all the violence and hatred that he, and he gave back forgiveness and love. In some other readings from his passion, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. So we are drawn to the image of Jesus on the cross, not because of some dark fascination with suffering, but because we recognize there is divine love that is stronger than sin and death, a divine light which no dark, human darkness can overpower. The example of Jesus' suffering is a source of light, of personal comfort, strength, and inspiration to all of us in our times of pain and suffering, because when we suffer, we are one with Jesus and his sufferings. Holy Week offers us an opportunity to bring our hearts and minds into harmony with Jesus Christ and to conform our lives more to his. Let our reflection on the cross bring us conversion of heart so that we may conform our lives to be more like Christ. Let us enter Holy Week as Pope Francis tells us and to follow Christ on his road to Calvary in the company of the poor, the brokenhearted, the neglected, the lost, and despairing. Like Simon of Serene, let us offer a helping hand to assist the sick and the weary, to nourish the weak and support the powerless and those crushed by human indifference. This Holy Week, we look at the most sacred three days of our church year, the sacred tritium, three days, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. And in these days, we enter into the reality of the last and reality of the Paschal mystery, the death and resurrection of Jesus. We see on the Last Supper, Holy Thursday, where Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, at the Passover meal, where Jesus gives us the gift of his body and blood in the Eucharist. We watch him pray on Good Friday with Jesus in the garden 
of Gethsemane where he has suffered so intensely as he waits his betrayer and he is dragged before the high priest Herod, Pilate and the jeering crowd on Good Friday and we walk to Calvary with him and stand at his cross and watch as he is crucified. We stand and mourn with his mother Mary who watched helplessly by. And then we wait at the tomb and after recalling all of these events we will be more ready than ever for rejoicing at Easter, the most sacred day for all Christians as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus to a new life. We stand now and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn in great faith and trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer all of our prayers today. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, that they may continue by the guidance of the Holy Spirit to shepherd our church in these challenging times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, Sudan, Haiti, and all areas of conflict. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our catechumen Kirby, and for all those preparing for initiation sacraments during the Easter season, that they always walk in the light of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless, the hungry, migrants, refugees, and all victims suffering injustice and war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show care and respect for the earth, our common home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the light of God, may be the health and hope of the sick and for all who provide compassionate care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, for our recently deceased Betty Perry and Ida Roberts, and we pray for Gerald O'Mara, Annette Evans, and Kevin Green, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for your own special intention at this Mass today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts is in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 378, O Sacred Head Surrounded, number 378.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with praise and glory in his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord. May our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sin, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. Now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when that same evening he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of his death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us one another. May you make your Church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace for all, among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, with all the bishops and the clergy and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together 
with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, with all of our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is in Celebrate in Song, 6.2, Dona Nobis Pachem, 6.2.
Just a reminder, please pick up a copy of the bulletin to look at the events of this week. On Tuesday night, everyone is welcome to the Mass of Chrism, where the bishop will bless the oils for the year. All the priests will be here to uh, profess their vows, again, renew their vows again, as well as, uh, you know, uh, an archdiocesan celebration to be part of. So hopefully at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, you will all make an effort to be here. Holy Thursday at 7 o'clock, we have the Mass, very important part, we have our Tritium, the three sac most sacred days, and these are times we should be worshiping with our community. So Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, the Mass of the Last Supper, and of course the washing of the feet, a beautiful uh, ceremony there. As well, Good Friday at 3 o'clock, the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, at that time, the renewal of his Passion. Friday night uh, will be um, adoration, uh, sorry, an adoration, uh, the uh, Stations of the Cross at 7 o'clock, and there will be usual confessions between 11 and 12 on Holy Saturday and also on Good Friday. Then the Vigil, the mother of all really liturgies, is on at 8 o'clock on next Saturday. So the Easter Vigil at 8 o'clock. We will also welcome into our church uh, about four or five uh, new young people, people for the for uh, to be brought into the church and welcome to the church and receive confirmation is also the baptism of an adult catechumen Kirby. Our masses at uh, on uh, Easter Sunday will be at nine o'clock and at eleven. There will be no seven o'clock mass on Easter Sunday. Seven o'clock, uh, nine o'clock in the morning and eleven o'clock. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our missioning hymn is in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 380, Jesus, Remember Me number 380. Mm -hmm. 